Hi, I'm weird. I like nerd shit, but not the mainstream nerd shit. Don't come at me with Avengers, I haven't seen almost any of them. I am big into pen and paper RPGs. They are my favorite hobby. I listen to jazz and blues, then also sci-fi and fantasy soundtracks, and then really strange, high energy, sometimes experimental, dubstep and Eurobeat stuff. I am addicted to playing devil's advocate. Given enough time, I will steer any conversation into inappropriate territory just to see how the people around me react. I will pretend to have horrific beliefs just to make a joke that is funny to me but that I know no one else around will find funny. I'm fascinated by conspiracy theories and political extremism, the very farthest fringes of the human condition, the psychology of serial killers, and creepy small bits of trivia. This is the lock screen of my tablet computer. I have a loud voice and Tourette syndrome. I talk to myself excessively, even in public. I don't drink coffee. I overshare my mental health with people I have only just met because I want to normalize people talking openly about their mental health. I will sometimes, in the middle of a party, go to another room and be there alone for an hour and then come back as though nothing has happened. That's just a small selection of the weird shit that I do. And you know what? Me being weird is completely fine. I can count on one hand the instances where it has interfered with my adult dating life. As a matter of fact, most of the time it's played hugely to my advantage, and it can for you too, no matter your gender or sexual orientation. Today I will not teach you any pickup techniques. I will not show you how to be the perfect person that will attract whatever private parts you want more of in your life into your life. And I also won't be giving you that one simple trick that will make the person you've been chasing for weeks months or even years suddenly romantically interested in you even though they are not. Listen, if that is the reason why you are watching this video, keep watching, but also stop doing that for your own sake. No matter who you are, not everyone that you find attractive will also find you attractive. That's just a fact of life that we all have to deal with. Every single person that has ever lived in the history of ever. And that's fine because there's always a lot of people who are just as good as that person who will find you attractive. However, you should still do these things, or rather this one thing really, because that is what all of this boils down to. Treat yourself well. That's it, that is the one trick to being attractive, and also many other great things in life, but especially to being attractive while weird. But what does that mean? After all, all your weirdness has done thus far is put people off. That you come out with your passion about freshwater fish, or hospital administration, or bionicle, and they go, Ooh, that's not normal, that's gross. Listen, the reason you think this, and the reason that you're afraid of this, is simple. Trauma. Your teenage years are a very formative phase for your identity and your sexual sense of self. It is also the phase in life where people are exploring what it means to be normal and how to exert social pressure. Teenagers are often disgusted by people outside of the arbitrary peer group that they consider to be normal. Even someone who is interested outside of that peer group or the things that that peer group expects might not actually go for that person and also reject them because of the social pressure. This is a completely normal part of a person's developmental process. It isn't something that can be rushed. It isn't something that really means anything, but you as a weirdo have probably suffered from it while you were a teenager. I know I have. The thing is, as people stop being teenagers and grow into mature adults, should have put both those words in quotation marks because no such thing actually exists. The thing that makes them exclude the weird people that I put in quotation marks stops also. I'm not gonna lie to you, people like that still exist as adults, but they are essentially the Dursleys of the world. Perfectly normal, perfectly well-adjusted, and perfectly boring. 
You might be chasing such a person right now because you are yourself seeking the kind of validation that comes from being considered normal, but trust me, you will not enjoy spending time with them. They are boring. Their depth of experience just doesn't go as deep for some reason, and they're fine with that. Generally speaking, being passionate about anything, but especially about weird niche things, turns you from being a weirdo into being interesting. And it doesn't matter if the other person actually shares that passion. Yes, your fascination for the historical context in which Argentinian tango music came to be is actually something that makes you attractive to other people because it shows that you can be passionate about things, and it also shows that you have confidence in being yourself. This sends the signal to other people that you think of yourself as a person that is worth being been with. Not sure that sentence made sense, but I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. And confidence is essential. It makes you immediately more attractive to pretty much everybody, not just potential romantic prospects, but also friends. And I'm, I'm not gonna tell you to just be confident, because that's not how this works. Apparently, I have been told at many points in my life that I come off as having a kind of relaxed confidence like nothing in the world can harm me. Which is weird, because I am deeply insecure. <laughs> Show some interest for other people's interests, even when you don't necessarily share those interests. Because after all, when they do it the other way around, that makes you feel good. And so that'll also make them feel good, especially if they think of you as an interesting person. It turns out, and this is true, People are very attracted to people that make them feel good. Unless, of course, you have been severely damaged psychologically during your childhood. Then you might find yourself attracted very often to people who use their affection to manipulate you emotionally, because that is what your primary caregivers used to do. Seriously though, a lot of the most confident people that you will meet in your life are actually deeply insecure inside. They're just very good at dealing with that and at expressing confidence outward. Which, you know, also everybody in the world has insecurities. I'd go so far as to say that there aren't actually any really completely confident people at all, and there never have been. There's just people who are very good at faking confidence. Which, of course, you know, makes people very afraid of being found out about that they don't actually have real confidence. There's just an additional layer of insecurity that can make them very combative. But you can just pretend to be more confident than you actually are. And not only will this trick other people, it will also trick yourself into being more confident than you actually are. Trust me, and also trust every single weirdo in the comment section that has tried this, it works. Obviously, don't be an asshole. That isn't what confidence is. It is actually the opposite of confidence, although I am having a hard time judging you for thinking otherwise, because a lot of people get the two mixed up. Especially for weirdos, being an asshole often expresses as looking down on people who don't share your particular little niche interests, and you need to not do that. It's a defense mechanism. You think this because you think other people look down on your weird hobbies, but usually, at least among adults, they don't, so you don't really have to worry about that. Don't be a weird asshole. That is some of the creepiest shit that you can be. And I will do a video on how not to be a creep at some point in the future but just not right now. Just focus on not being an asshole, and you'll be fine. Treat yourself well emotionally. Tell yourself that you, despite all of your flaws and insecurities which you have and which everybody else also has, you are fine. Despite the fact that you just got rejected, you are still a good prospect for dating for other people. Just not that particular person, but you will meet someone else, or maybe you already have met someone else, and it'll be fine. It doesn't reflect badly on you. Be kind to yourself, because you deserve it. But also, in addition to treating yourself well emotionally, treat yourself well physically. The reason people have often rejected you isn't because you are weird, but because you use being weird as an excuse not to take care of yourself, and that has a ripple effect. The difference between being weird and being interesting is simply a matter of perspective, and you can change that perspective for other people by changing how you choose to present yourself. First lesson, appearance is not as important as you think. 
It also isn't completely irrelevant, as some people would have you believe. It absolutely isn't. But it's not as important as you think it is. Listen, the biggest king that I know, the guy that has pretty much all women in some way going, oh yeah, he's, a, he's quite attractive actually. He's short, he's fat, and he smokes, which is disgusting. Stop smoking, man. It, I need you to not have lung cancer in 20 years. The thing is, my man takes care of himself. He projects an aura of confidence. He's funny, he's compassionate, nice. He genuinely cares about his hobbies and the people around him. He makes people feel good. Women try to get into his pants all the time, and presumably so do men, because he is a very attractive person. Look at me. It took me a while to figure this out, but apparently, I am quite attractive, despite the fact that I am somewhat average looking. And conversely, when looking at other people, I often find myself not necessarily attracted to the 10 out of 10 Victoria's Secret underwear models, but the interesting women who are actually interesting. And this includes being visually interesting. I distinctly find that when there's women who are like, perfect, nothing. That just is nothing. Too, it's too perfect. I don't like it. I need some flaws. Which, you know, just obviously those kinds of women can also be interesting, of course. But here's a secret. Even traditionally attractive people are insecure about their appearance. Tall and graceful, beautiful women wish they were just a little smaller because they think that's what the guys want, and the small women wish they were a little taller and more graceful. And guys who are huge and bulky wish they were a little lankier so they don't have such a fat looking frame, while at the same time the lankier guys wish they were a lot bulkier. The grass is always greener on the other side, and chasing the spectre of feeling good about your own appearance while basing it of what other people think of your appearance will only make you feel bad because there's always gonna be people who don't like the way you look. You can't be all of the things at once. That is, in the physical reality we occupy, not possible. The only person that can really actually convince you that you look good is you. And that is confidence, that is self-love, that is what makes you attractive. You see this shit, I, you probably can't see it, you probably can't, it's like, I need to focus the camera. But it's like red, right? It's, it's sort of weird around my nose. This happens every couple of weeks. It was worse like yesterday, which is why I thought I'd make this video. I've been putting this off until this shit comes back, but it went away quite quickly. It's very irritating, also, like, physically. There's, like, pimples in this area. It's very common. I was with a, a beautiful woman for three years. We woke up in the bed next to each other pretty much every morning. She didn't even notice. Meanwhile, I was super insecure about it, and I still am. I don't have six-pack abs, but even a little bit of a belly. It used to be a lot bigger and kind of a health concern even, so I treated myself well and I went on a- not really a diet, I just started counting calories and I started working out more. And now it's still there, but it's pretty much minimal unless I've just eaten something. I'll tell you something else also. Most women actually, especially as they grow older, prefer the belly because it is soft and cuddly. Maybe if you're a woman, you are concerned about your curves, or maybe you think your frame is too thin. If you're anyone, really, you might think, oh, my, my nose is too big and my eyes are too far apart. I'm here to tell you that not only are there plenty of people who find your particular configuration very attractive, but also, there's a lot of people whom you envy for their features that also envy you for your features. So how do you make your features shine? Well, you gotta take care of yourself. The key to being an attractive weirdo is to be a well-adjusted weirdo. You can be a weird-ass person on the inside, but you still live in a society, and you can be part of that society without having to sacrifice your essential weirdness. That is what it means to be well-adjusted, and it's extremely attractive to people because it just gives you more depth of character. And the most important key thing to do to be well-adjusted, is taking care of your personal hygiene. I'm not gonna go into the hygiene bit too much because I've already made a video about that, all of the things that you should do to be hygienic. I'm gonna be linking it, I think, in this area it is. Watch the video, do the things, grow your self-confidence immediately. When it comes to style, when in doubt, 
ask a friend of yours who is attracted to your gender to maybe help you out a little bit with a makeover or just gradually try on things that you think look good but in which also you are comfortable because being comfortable can make you more confident. You don't have to walk around in a tuxedo wherever you go unless of course you are into that but you should take care of your clothes and wardrobe. Find out what colors look good on you and maybe get some clothing items that have those colors. Find out the color combinations and how they work best. For me my colors are dark shades of red, green and blue. They look quite good on me so I wear them a lot. I don't wear them exclusively but I do like them. And when in doubt, everybody looks good in black. Wear clothes that fit you and which flatter your frame. A lot of people who are on the bigger side like to wear baggy clothes and there's nothing wrong with this. A lot of men like to wear exclusively t-shirts and let me tell you something about t-shirts that a lot of people don't seem to know. They're not really designed to complement the male frame. They don't flatter it. I still wear a lot of t-shirts because, you know, I always have. But I also, you will notice, often wear these shirts. This isn't terrible, right? It's, it's just, this t-shirt isn't even really a traditionally cut t-shirt. So it's usually just fine. But it's so easy to improve upon this by simply using a shirt. Now I have the cable going here because I'm stupid. But that's also part of my style. It's moderately sleazy. It's fine to be moderately sleazy and scruffy, so long as you're actually clean. Different benefit from this combination, you can sweat here, it'll sweat, it'll stay in your t-shirt, probably not gonna stay in your shirt unless you're sweating like very excessively. It's great during hot summers, which we don't really get up here in Northern Germany, but you know what I mean. Plus, it keeps you cool in every sense of the word. See what I did there? That was weird as fuck, but it probably still made you uh, crack a smile because I delivered it with confidence. It is not a betrayal of your identity to acquire style. It is in fact an elevation of your weird identity because it doesn't need to be confined to the fringes of society. You have the power to bring it in there and still be well adjusted. This isn't Eastern Europe. You're not allowed to go to church in a tracksuit. Unless, of course, you're one of the five people in the world who can pull that off. How are the Balkans these days? Make an effort not for the other people, but for yourself. Remember that the reason we're doing all this is because we're trying to learn to treat ourselves right. You deserve to wear the clothes that make you feel attractive because that makes you be attractive. It's witchcraft. And listen, don't change for some individual person or what you think people expect from you in general, because that's not gonna make you happy. Change for yourself. Change because you want to feel more confident and more attractive, because you deserve to feel more confident and attractive. And don't give me this, oh, I feel perfectly comfortable right now bullshit, because you clearly don't. That's not comfort, that's just fear of change. You want people to think of you as more confident and attractive than you are right now. 99%. So really what this all boils down to, what I'm trying to say is you don't have to sacrifice your weirdness in order to be attractive and interesting and a person that people want to talk to in the real world. You can still be yourself and frankly, more yourself than you are right now. Trust me on this. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or subscribe. Start buying some of my merchandise, which there's also shirts. That's gonna make you very uh, attractive and handsome to have this face staring at people from your chest area. Or, you know, maybe buy my short story collection. And in that spirit, be attractive. I can tell you to do this because you can do this. This is within your power to do. And see you around, cunts.